If you're looking for exciting light tackle backcountry action, there he is. <laughs> there he is. Oh, that's what we've been looking for. Stick around. This episode is for you. There he is. Woo Whoa! Check this route out. Chris Hansen and I take the shallow water mark on an adventure around northern Key Largo. That's the beauty of a snook. Beautiful snook. To catch snook, tarpon, jacks, and we are all within 20 minutes of the marina. Stay tuned. George Poforomo's world of saltwater fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. Key Largo is a very unique place. It sits at the top of the Florida Keys chain, and you have all kinds of exciting fishing from reef offshore to the backcountry. Now, mention backcountry to anglers who fish out of this area, and a lot of them think you're going to venture 30 some odd miles or even more to get into the Everglades. And one of the favorite things that I like to do when I shallow water fish here is stick to Key Largo proper. There are so many sounds, creeks, mangrove islands on, on both the Atlantic and Gulf side that you don't have to really run far to find action. And if the wind's really cranking, there are plenty of places to hide and still catch fish. I had a shallow water mark docked at Sundowners in Key Largo, just a nice quaint marina. And, and given the times that I fished on shows with a lot of the backcountry guides from Key Largo, I've come to know and appreciate what I like to call George's trifecta. These are three premier Key Largo backcountry guides. They consist of not only Chris Hansen, but you have Tony De Los Santos, the Lion Hawaiian, and then you have George Clark Jr. Those three guys you can't miss with. I meet George at Sundowners in the morning. Uh, we get on the boat, we make sure all our tackle's ready, rigged up, and uh, I tell George, I said, we're gonna go catch us some live bait. So Chris and I left Sundowners. I was aboard the Shallow Water Mark, which is a Mako 21 light tackle skiff. Just a quick, fun boat to get around and do a lot of this fishing. Naturally, the first stop was to catch live bait. We run up to uh, Jewfish Creek Bridge. We, uh, we find some finger mullet. We get about, I don't know, 40, 50 mullet in the well. And then uh, look at George and I said, well, the spot's just around the corner. And how far you let it go before you pick it up again? You can let it go out into the right. channel here just a little bit. As far as you want to drag it back. I got know? you. <laughs> oh, he's nervous. There you go. Did I do the snooky? Oh, you, you, throw, you got him here? Come yeah. on in. Yes, you did. You got him. Pulled him right out for only like three feet under those mangroves. Yeah. <laughs> there he has. Make sure there's a bunch of sharks around in here. Let's get this guy in here first. There we go. Way to do it. You did an excellent job on them. Good. Here's your. You know he did a good job, and it's hard to get the hook out. There you have it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Nice little Key Largo snook. Right in the back country, and there he goes. I'm not going to spend too much time. My hand down there just need kind of short. Yeah, I wouldn't leave him in there too. Long. <laughs> I saw you make the cast, and I just got a corner of my eye. I was trying on another jig head. I just saw it like get right up under there. Yeah, I almost skipped it. it. Was in there, and then you said all of a sudden. There you go, boom. And that was like just, instant, just right there, not even at the point. Just a subtle bite. We were taking the finger mullet and hooking them on little eighth of an ounce or quarter of an ounce jig heads right through the uh, upper lip. And we were casting them just up the current line from where we wanted to fish. That way that the, the bait would come down along the shore, right about where the fish should be, and then that's where we were getting our bites. Nice, a little tarpon. 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 You want the net on him or you just Yeah, let's, let's net him. Come on up, buddy. <laughs> Come on, bud. I don't have it locked. There you go, my friend. Nice and easy in this guy. There we go. Nice and easy. <laughs> here we go. Awesome. Let me get this guy here. Chris said to be a lot of these fish around, which is one of the highlights of the trip. And I was hoping to get one or two of these small tarpon. I like to call them manageable tarpon. They're so great, you get all the jumps as you would with the bigger fish, but they're manageable. You're not gonna sit and fight uh, one of these for 20 minutes, for 45 minutes or so, like you would a 150 plus pounder. Just a cool fish. 
You said we get into these smalls. Yes, though, sir. Oh, you get a grip we got on. this fall mullet run, and they start showing up. He's barely hooked too. Oh no, you did. No, oh look at that. The, the hook yeah, is out. Right out. No sooner did you come to <laughs> my rescue. Uh, I'm gonna get this guy in the water. Ready to remove the net? He's just gonna. There we go. Oh, that's right, beautiful. What do you think, huh? Awesome. Oh, like Carpin, he did so well for us. That's awesome, George. Get out of here. Chris, I was looking for that. I, I wasn't going to tell you because I don't put the pressure on you. He says, man, I love the juvenile tarpon. Good thing about them is that you don't have to sit and fight it for an hour like 150 yeah. pounder. These things are fun. They're like perfect tackle. size. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, the official outboard of George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Simrad and the new NSS Evo 3 display. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. We're back at Key Largo in the Florida Keys. Chris Hansen and I are catching snook and tarpon just minutes from our dock at Sundowners. We were fishing with the new Penn Slammer 3 reels. George had put some suffix braid on them. Now the Coastal Camel braid, hard for fish to detect under certain water quality and conditions. It's highly visible for the angler to see that blue camo type of line. Coupled with the 40 pound test fluorocarbon leader we were using, it was a lot harder for fish to distinguish. Now granted, we are fishing in roiled up water, but in clear water conditions, this is where that combination would really stand out. All right, we're good. Keep them coming. You got him, George. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Oh. That's what we've been looking for. Ooh. He's still angry for some reason. <laughs> this, this fish is still has an attitude. Nice hook set too. Right there in the mouth. <laughs> that was tough pulling through that jungle. I felt oh. this right get around that several times. And get that out for you. Bingo, and there it is, right? Very nice, no. nice, nice fish. Ready. Okay, put them, we'll let them go. Yeah. It is very nice, and I'm not going to spend too much time with them in that murky water. Oh, yeah. I know some of the sharks that you have around this place. <laughs> we, we got some nice sharks around here. There we go. I like this spot you brought us to. Wide open water now. I think that's a, the elusive fish that we were that talking Jack about Bell, earlier. There you go. I thought water won't even going to show up. I mean, how could you come to Key Largo and do the backcountry <laughs> stuff without not, not catching any of these? Bell? The Jack Cravel uh, finally got into one of those. But what was funny about that, the jacks that you're hoping to catch, uh, if the snook and tarpon weren't on their feed, turned out to be the one that was harder to catch, but the snook and tarpon were playing and they were chewing. That was a pretty cool surprise. I was glad it worked out that way. Okay, there's your circle hook. All right. And there's your Jack Cravel. All right, that, that, now, now this is like the Key Largo we all know and love. That's right. Get him across the tree top. There, he's clear. Got it coming your way? Got it coming. A little snooky? Yeah, a little. I would just ensure. Whoops, whoops. Get him up, get him up. <laughs> uh, just a little insurance on the net there. <laughs> Here, you going to grab him out and take a look at him. They're stacking on that branch. They are, like, huh? I'll help you here. Clip it off. I'll, I'll get you right out. Just come right out here. Don't get free. Got him? Yep. So, now, in relationship to that mangrove point and these branches coming out, where did you get that fish to hit? Well, that one stick I that's sticking up that, yeah. just on the other side of that stick is just laying right there. Let me get some shots in there too, so it's a active yeah. zone. It's just a lot of stuff to pull through. Okay, well I'm all rigged, ready. I'm going in. I got a little fray. We tie. See if we can get a bigger one. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. 
ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. We'll be right back. As Chris Hansen and I have been showcasing, you don't have to travel far to find fish around Key Largo in the Florida Keys. What's more, there's plenty of non-fishing activities here too. On-land attractions, or actually a combination of on-land and water attractions, John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park. This is over 70 acres of Atlantic Ocean, and it's the first underwater park in the United States. You could do basically anything here from snorkel operations and go out and just look at some of the magnificent reefs that they have in this area. Uh, if you're an experienced diver, you can do scuba dives out here. They have glass bottom boat tours. There's kayaking to see the nature. It's uh, nothing like it in the entire country. And if you're down here and you have some spare time, go take in John Penny Camp. It's just a remarkable area and it always pleases. There's no doubt about it. Also, if you're not fishing, things to do, definitely take an eco tour in this area. You have the backcountry, the maze of mangroves and the, the shallows back in here, and the kind of wildlife that you could see. It's very unique and it's an education. The fishing up in Key Largo, it's, it's different than it is down south because we've got intercoastal waterways. Got yeah, we've got different sounds and little bays and a lot of places to hide when the wind blows. There's tarpon, big jacks in this part of the world. And the good thing about that is uh, if you're hungry, it's around lunchtime, dock the boat behind Alabama Jacks, go see Dog, have yourself a uh, pretty decent lunch in a historic place and continue on. Just a lot of things to do with a rod and without a rod in the upper area of Key Largo in the Florida Keys. Nice fish, George. <laughs> I told you I thought it got bumped. Nice fish. I get him to you? Hold on, come in one more lap around here. One more lap. One more lap. Circle hooks in the corner. And there he's he in the net. Circle hooks in the corner and the snook is in the net. <laughs> been a decent bite of snook, I'm telling you. Yeah, good bite. Yeah, absolutely. Fall, fall mullet run. Uh, awesome. Can't beat that. No, we will send him back. Get, let them fill up with some more mullet. We're looking good. Yeah, biting on you. Goodbye. He's out of here. Fantastic. We are at doing well in the snook. Oh man, nice fish. I got the net right here waiting for you. All right, he's going to get, he's going to give me a tussle here. This is. I have to come around the back here. Now I'm gonna turn him, I'm gonna turn him. I'll get him, get him inside over here. And you go to town. Once that snook comes up, that's when you try to keep it off balance and you wind as rapidly as you can. Get it out of all that vegetation and structure. Nice thick fish. It's a Key Largo snook. Lucky we didn't bring a ruler. That's a snook, huh? Uh, what do you think, short? I think he's just short. Just short. Just short, but he's good healthy fish though. Very good. Well, apparently there's uh, there seem to be like stacking on that. I said the wind helps. It does. A lot of people don't want to go when it's windy like this, but it's it makes fishing good. And it's nice and cool. Yes. Okay, we'll send him back down. Right, here we go. Very good, Chris. The Key Largo Marriott Bayside is an incredible place to say sheer beauty here. They have a little bit of everything going for them here in that you have a beach, you actually have a marina. If you want to bring your own boat and dock up, you can do that. And who better to tell you about the Marriott itself than their marketing person, Lourdes Torbisco. The Key Largo Marriott is very comfortable, very stylish, um, great accommodations. Our suites have full kitchens. We've got great views, glass balconies. Just a really comfortable space for friends and family to gather. We consider ourselves the champions of leisure. I think uh, in the Keys in general, we do that very well. So it's a great place to kick back and relax. And there's so much space here that there's all different kinds of areas where you can relax. Between the hammocks and the lounge spaces and the fire pits at night, it just creates a very um, relaxing, fun Keys experience. George's Tackle Locker, brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Engel, the pioneer of portable refrigeration and cooling, has recently introduced the line of soft-sided coolers 
which maintain the cold for extended periods of time. Take their new HD30, for example. This ultra-durable cooler features welded seams, not sewn, closed cell foam insulation, a waterproof and air-resistant zipper, and a patent-pending vacuum valve, which enables excess air to be vacuumed out prior to loading. Warm air is kept out, and the life of ice packs or ice will be dramatically increased because there's no air seepage. In recent testing, Angle's HD30 model kept beverages cold for four and a half days in 90 degree air temps. The HD30's outer shell is composed of durable 840 denier fibers and its front and back sides are laminated with thermal plastic urethane film. It has an integrated bottle opener, tote handles, and a single padded strap. It's an ultra durable cooler that's ideal on skiffs with limited room or to carry lunches for the entire crew, which is how it's used aboard the Mark VI. Mercury Performance Stats Key Largo. Seas 2 to 3 feet. Power Mercury 150 horsepower four stroke. Average RPMs 3,800. Total miles 18. Total fuel burned 4.7 gallons. We'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Proudly brought to you by Starbright, professional grade boat care products. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. It's off to another spot for Chris Hansen and me. We're at Key Largo in the Florida Keys and enjoying a fast day of snook fishing not far from the dock. As that one spot dried out, we would fire up the motor and then just creep over to another spot along the mangroves, power pull down and bait that. Usually I give a spot about 20, 25 minutes depending on the conditions. If, you don't, if you're not getting a bite, there's, there's no sense of staying. So we eventually ended up at the point, and that wind was really on us. Um, I mean, still fishable. And Chris said, you know what, I've got a spot. I don't even know if it's five minutes from here. Let's run over. It's gonna be the mouth of a creek. It'll be on the lee of some of these mangroves. And he said, uh, with all the conditions, the way that they are, there should be some snook in there. I said, let's go. We ran to another spot that was probably just another only five or 10 minutes away. We pull up in there, it was sheltered from the wind. We had a nice nice current going in this little small creek. Probably Chris's second shot in there, the rod bends and he rears back and I've got him. There he's clear. Well, I hooked this snook and uh, it didn't move. Right off the bat, it didn't move. And then all of a sudden it came Beeline and towards the boat. Oh, he's got hold of. Got to here. Oh, okay. Oh boy. I'm thinking I've got probably 15, 10 seconds, whatever, to get the net, get position. Next thing I know, the fish is alongside the boat. By the time he got the net, the fish was already at the boat, and he was going back behind the boat. There he is. Woo! Check this root out. <laughs> And uh, it was a very, very nice snook. Upper, upper, upper slot, a good, nice eating size fish. That's the beauty of a snook. Beautiful snook. So, are we releasing or are you taking us home for dinner? I think he's coming to dinner. I bet you are. I, I, I do think I he's coming to dinner. I can tell there's no leadway in there with that, uh, no, no, your answer there. there's nothing like some cast iron uh, grilled snook there. Check that. Look at that fish. Awesome Look fish. Look at his shoulders. Look how, Look how thick, uh, yeah, how, so how solid thick. thick they're getting here. Just mullet eating machines right, right now. And, and like times of the year that you see, I mean, we're coming here or what? Well, we've got, we've got the fall mullet run okay. right now. So the mullet are pouring through all these little creeks and uh, channels, and they're staging up anywhere they can find an ambush point. Like we caught this fish right up against the trees. Uh -huh. That mullet, we just drifted him right down the edge there, and boom, there he was. And it was a beautiful snook type of snook that we came out here to catch and I could look at Chris's face he was all excited and I could also read his face this snook wasn't going to be released and I told George I said we, you know we should we should take this to sundowners and have them cook it up for us so we came back into the sundowners marina there and later that evening uh, we all sat down and had a fantastic dinner Sundowners, um, naturally it's known for its restaurant, which is really incredible all unto itself, but they have a nice little cozy marina, and at times that I come down here, uh, they're always nice enough to uh, give me some dock space, but a very nice, comfortable area to work out of. Our, our, our trip was done. 
We proved a lot of things on this. Key Largo, if you're looking for backcountry action, you don't have to run 30, 40 some miles to find it. Sure, you can get deep in the Everglades, see some great scenery along the way and catch some decent fish, but you don't have to burn that kind of gasoline. You know, George called me on the phone uh, right after the hurricane and I, uh, it almost brought a tear to my eye. In fact, I think it did bring a tear to my eye. I felt uh, extremely privileged to be, uh, be able to go on his show because I've never, never done anything like this before. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. And the beauty of it was I got to spend time with Chris Hansen. As I mentioned, I've known this name for a long time and I've, I've always known him at arm's length. He is a snook expert. This guy knows where these snooks stack up at certain times of the year and certain tide stages. He's a deadly accurate caster. He knows just where to place those baits. And if you're looking for snook, get a hold of him because he's gonna put you on it. And we proved it. We had a great variety. We had plenty of snook. We had tarpon, Jack Crevel, mangrove snapper, and Key Largo in the upper Florida Keys. And all I could say after today's trip, only in the Keys. Stay in touch with George. Visit georgepoveromo.com. On Facebook, facebook.com forward slash George dot On Instagram, at George Poveromo. YouTube, George Poveromo TV. And on mobile devices, Waypoint TV.